and welcome to the album man and today is a review that quite honestly I've been quite nervous about to be honest so why would, why would I be nervous about doing a review well quite frankly it's that I have to say I disagree disagree with what you may ask well let me explain today as I'm sure you know by the title unless you know you have sight problems that I'm going to be reviewing Megadeth's new album Super Collider and this is the 14th studio album for the band which follows 2011's 13 so shocker it's the 14th and the thing about this it's got quite a bit of criticism especially compared to albums such as 2009's Endgame which was met with almost universal praise and um, even 13, 13 had fairly positive reviews there were some who didn't like it but in general it was it was fairly positive and I've been looking forward to this album immensely, as I enjoyed both 13 and Endgame a lot. I thought they were both fantastic albums. Endgame the better of the two, but I really, really enjoyed both. But this album has been met with, as I said before, a lot of criticism from the YouTube album reviewing community. In fact, it has a U Critic, which is a score I have made up, basically. It's a Metacritic of YouTube, been, you know, watching quite a lot of reviews of the album. Of around about 5.8 out of 10 is the average if you, you know, add all the reviews, obviously before this review was made, because I can't quite look into the future. And of course some people didn't give it a score. But yeah, so this indicates a very average album, and well of course I respect the opinion of my peers, on this album I have to disagree with the pretty harsh scores being dished out. You see, the thing about this album, it's not really a thrash metal album. I mean, it, it barely resembles thrash. It barely resembles... well, not barely, but it, I wouldn't even call it a metal album. I classify it, really, as a hard rock album. But is that really a bad thing? I mean, I think that a lot of people, they've listened to this and it's like, what the feck is this? Oh my god damn metal, you mustain, feck you. But... I think what you need to accept with this album, it's not Rust in Peace or Endgame Part 2, but it's its own entity. Now, some will say, well, maybe it's not quite its own entity in the album, and, you know, what about albums like Risk and The World Needs a Hero, which this album does bear some similarity to the 90s, more hard, rocky Megadeth. But I still think it has a bit of difference to it, and I think it's quite an interesting release for Megadeth to put out. But the thing is, does the lack of metal make this album awful? Well, no, I'm going to argue how it doesn't, but this isn't exactly the best album either. So the album kicks off with Kingmaker, and this is the second um, single from the album, and to us this was met by praise by quite a few people, and I couldn't agree more. To me this track is a metal track, um, bordering into thrash, and it starts out in a very endgame even 13-ish way. It has a loud, thrashy riff with a solid beat from Drover, whose drumming is actually a little disappointing on this album. Um, I don't particularly rate him as a drummer, though. And Mustaine singing a damn catchy chorus. I mean, I really do think Mustaine vocally is better on... well, maybe not. He's sort of... the ear was certainly from um, whatever that album before Endgame was, United Abominations, was it? See, from then to about um, Super Collider, I think his vocals have been better with, than they were on the more classic albums like Peace Stars and Rust in Peace. I think his vocals really have matured with age, like a good wine. And the deeper tones he sings, I think, are nicer on the ear and, um, you know, than the bores and a garlic crusher voice of Peace Sours, which is one way I heard it described once, which I just loved. And... So the guitars on this album, they are tuned a bit lower to accommodate the low range he has now. And yeah, I, I think the guitars sound great. I really like the tone of production on this album. is is very strong, I have to say. And I don't think many people can deny the production values on this album, even if they don't like the actual content. And yeah, I really like guitar work on this um, song. And yeah, I mean, when don't Megadeth have awesome solos? And to me, it's a really good start to the album. And then we get Super Collider, the track that caused all the controversy in the metal world, meeting a lot of negative reviews. I mean, I only get this a 6 out of 10, which for Megadeth single was quite low. But I have to say, I don't quite agree with myself, even. Um, I think it, the song has actually grown on me a bit. I've sort of accepted it for what it is. And I think that's part of the reason that I'm not going to be giving this album that negative review. I've accepted the album for what it is. And this song, it is, it's a good, solid, stomping rock song. 
and for some they may be like, oh, Mega Death and Rock, no, no, I, I want Thrash from my Mega Death, but in my opinion, as long as they're producing decent music, I could not care less what genre it is. Um, and also, I still maintain this line, it does remind me a bit of the new wave of British heavy metal. I mean, I know I've got some comments be like, oh, no, it doesn't, but I don't know. To me, it bears a bit of resemblance to Saxon's new album, you know. And, yeah, I think, okay, this song is quite lyrically, structurally simplistic, but to me, decent riff, catchy chorus, and I'm a sucker for a good hard rock song like that, and combined with a nice solo from Broderick, I think, I mean, don't quote me on it, you fanboys, but I, I think it's, I think it's decent. And then Ben, and uh, this is, this is quite a mediocre song, I have to say. There's nine really awful, per se, but the chorus doesn't exactly capture the imagination or the attention, in fact, the chorus can be a tad grating on the ears. The riff is fairly unimaginative, and the chorus feels pretty damn cliché and sterile. Definitely one of the weakest tracks on the album, I think, but it's it's okay. It's, it's not the worst they've ever done. But then Built For War, and I, I like this song quite a bit. It seems more of a metal song, and returns to the sound of Kingmaker. And yeah, I like this song quite a bit. Again, it's fairly simplistic. There's nothing like, overly complicated, you know, they're not going to have some, you know, dream theatre type technical stuff on here. It's all quite simplistic, and I think some of that is something that's put quite a few people off, to be honest. But I think this song, again, it just has good riff, it has a ca very catchy chorus, and it feels fairly mega deathy to me. I mean, you know, it's a type of thing that it doesn't surprise me. It certainly echoes 13. And, yeah, I mean, I especially love the bit where there's that almost baritone choir effect that comes in towards the middle, just over the riff, and I think it really gives the song that much-needed life and lift that it was crying for. And without it, it would have been quite a mediocre song. Then we get Off the Edge. To me, again, it's just another rock, solid, hard rock, metal song, whatever you want to call it. Featuring a particularly strong bass line from Ellison, I do like it, that I think it starts the song and yeah, it really drives the song forward nicely. Again, this song isn't exactly a musical revolution, but nice riff, cool hook, and I think Mustaine's voice is particularly strong, and I mean, I don't think he's a particularly good vocalist, let's get that straight, I never put him in the bandonium of great vocalists, but to be honest, how many fresh vocalists are really that great as singers? I mean... When I listen to Thrash, I, I don't listen to it for the vocals, I have to say. Um, yeah, so, again, it has that more you know, simplistic hard rock approach, and I think it works in its favour on this, and I think it's one of the highlights of the album, actually. I think it's just, yeah, another really good, solid song. Dance in the Wind, and this features David Draymond of Disturbed, which worried the hell out of me. Is, I can't say exactly like any of his work. I mean, Device and Disturbed, I mean, ugh. Disturbed especially, a pretty stale derivative band. And luckily his input is only quite small. In fact, I actually didn't notice it the first time I'm listening through. But I have since noticed it, and his voice fits quite nicely. Um, it's, you know, it's not too overbearing, it's mixed down a bit. So yeah, that's good. It definitely doesn't hinder the song, but I wouldn't say it adds to it either, not being a particular David Draymond fan. And what about the rest of the song? Well, Mustaine starts off with some more of this jive talking vocals, maybe trying to echo Finn Lizzy, hint hint towards the last track on the album. <laughs> um, and yeah, I like this sort of variation in singing, especially as it builds to, in my opinion, quite a climactic chorus, and it has one of the, well, some of the strongest solos on the album, to be honest. I really do like this song quite a bit, to be honest, and think it's one of the strongest on the album. Beginning of Sorrow. And has a fantastic little bass melody at the beginning, that's why I was getting confused with Off The Edge. Um, yeah, I think it's a worthy song of Megadeth. I honestly can't see really what with this song there is to hate. I mean, it has a nice melody and chorus, the technical aspect, in a way, is there more so than some of the other songs on the album, I'd say at least. And I think it's a pretty kick-ass Megadeth song. I mean, I, you know, I have to say to, you know, many's dismay, really, that it is a good song, you know. Then the Blackest Crow, and this does sound quite unexpected and integrates, I can't believe I'm saying this, but a banjo. Yeah, as in one of those twiddly things you see, um, old people in cartoons play on rocking chairs. Um, but yes, 
and let's say they integrate this banjo a hell of a lot better into the intro and throughout the actual rest of the song a lot more than Sonata Arctica, the power metal band's attempt in 2012, which was just a bloody travesty. And the banjo, in fact, I really like. I'm not a banjo fan. I don't like the banjo as an instrument, but I actually like it in this. Um, I think the way it's presented is actually really quite pleasant, and in fact, I go beyond pleasant. I'd say it's actually utilised well. Um, it, it, in fact, it carries on, yeah, as I said, it carries on through the verse, but there's still that overdriven guitar, and the combination, the way it's been mixed, um, surprisingly nice. Great mixing job there. And yeah, the song in general has a real sudden vibe to it, even bits of slide guitar. Yeah, it still has those Megadeth characteristics, though, I mean, they're not emphasised. This isn't exactly Hangar 18 or Holy Wars, you know. And I think it's quite brilliant, to be honest. It has a different, unique sound. I think it's damn cool, and it's probably my favourite song from this album. And even maybe exceeds anything in 13 as it takes off towards the end as the southern leads and heavy, thrashy rhythm collide. Forget to remember. Now this brings David Draymond in again. Oh god. So of course I was sceptical as hell about this song, but again, it actually delivered. I really think this latter part of the album is, is pretty damn good. And as the catchy melodic chorus comes flying in, but is this metal? No, it, it's hard rock, plain and simple. It, doesn't even seem it's trying to, with the standard rock beat from Drover and the hard rock lead from Broderick, I think. Again, I really don't know who's playing who in Megadeth, I have to say. I only ever usually know, because like on Endgame or whatever, it says in a booklet who's playing the solo, but I don't have the physical copy. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it's open this as a straight-up hard rock song. I don't think it should be that much of a negative. Yes, it's quite commercial. But just because a rock song is commercial doesn't make it automatically bad. I don't think you should dismiss a rock song just because it does have a commercial nature to it. There's been plenty of great um, commercial rock songs, but I can understand a wariness between them because they um, often tend to be quite derivative, quite unimaginative and um, uninteresting. Then Don't Turn You Back, and this is the last actual Megadeth written song on the album. It starts with a cool, even bluesy, loose jam feel to it, as more layers of guitar added to create a very cool rock sound before the then the you know double kick drum and thrash riff come charging in. And some people have commented on the lyrics of this song, which <sighs> I wish I may, I wish I might, and yes, it does sound pretty damn infantile to me. But if I want deep, interesting lyrics, I can't say Megadeth is exactly my first stop. I'd much rather visit the stops at Bob Dylan and Fish, the ex marillion singer, if I wanted some lyrics of substance. I don't think Dave Mustaine has ever been a good lyric writer. But I do have to agree that the lyrics in this do get to such an extent that they are actually laughable and damage the song. And I'm usually quite lenient about lyrics. There's a lot of bands I like, especially from the 80s, which the lyrics are just crap, but still have great songs. I mean, look at the Scorpions or White Snake. You know, White Snake more seventies, but and Scorpions as well. But um, both of them just shit lyrics, but fantastic bands that I love. But this this just takes it that bit too far. And even though it's thrashier than most of the others, it's quite a weak penultimate song. There are still elements that do enjoy, but I don't think it's a strong penultimate song. But luckily, the um, last song, which I was damn sceptical of. Now, this is called Sweat by Finn Lizzy. I'm a big, big Finn Lizzy fan. I have most of their albums on vinyl. But one of the albums I think that is most underrated in their catalogue is the Thunder and Lightning album, from which this album is from. Um, especially the title track, Thunder and Lightning. One of, if not my favourite, Finn Lizzy song. Absolutely adore that song. I love the even bordering on metal that Finn Lizzy went on that album. So it seems a natural album for Megadeth to take something from. And yeah, I think this is definitely a strong cover for Megadeth. And I mean, I'm not really a covers fan, but the solo added by if Broderick or Mustaine, I don't know who, is really effective in the song. And the added distortion really, um, well, yeah, works especially as um, Mustaine's voice really fits the song weirdly well, actually. I didn't expect to deliver such a strong vocal performance. It's a strong way to end a, uh, yeah, strong album. I... I, I have to say it. I am sorry I'm within community, but I have to say I quite enjoyed it. I met, I went, well, I'd 
tried to go into this with an open mind because actually before this I watched a ton of reviews of people not being the happiest of the album to say the least. So, you know, that was always in the back of my mind, but I still managed to go in with an open mind and wanting to like it. Why wouldn't I want to like a Megadeth record? I do like Megadeth, and no, I'm not a Megadeth fanboy. They're not one of my favourite bands. In fact, they're not even my favourite thrash band, but I do like them quite a bit. But the thing is, if, um, you know, I mean, I can understand why people are writing this off as a mediocre or bad album. You know, it is quite simplistic album, lyrically, there's not really much substance, I don't know when it ever has been. But, um, musically, there isn't that much, you know, it isn't one of those albums like Rust in Peace that really just makes you want to pick up a guitar and start thrashing. There isn't much drumming scale, the bass parts is good, again, on musical and technical level it's not that great. I just like the melodic level, I've always been more of a melodic fan than I am technical, you know, Dave Gilmore's one of my favourite guitarists as opposed to some ultra, you know, technical metal guitarist. And the thing is, if you want simply a thrash metal album, just avoid this at all costs. You're really not going to like it. It's not thrash. It's not, I don't even think it's trying to be. In some places it is, but in general it's not really trying to be. And if you don't mind a more hard rock focused album, then I do think there's joys to be found in this album. You just have to open your mind to the fact that, yeah, it is hard rock. It may not be innovative or particularly fascinating on a technical level, but some nice melodies, nice hook, and I just think it's good fun. It's definitely not going to be one of my favourite albums of the year, you know, it doesn't quite match Bowie's The Next Day or Steve LeCarver's Transition. One of the that album's one of the biggest surprise of the year. God, that is a good album. And it probably won't match Black Sabbath's 13. Yeah, I really, really hope that album's good. That is definitely my most anticipated of the year. And there's loads of other releases to come out. But still, I'll give this, I'd say, um, 7.5 out of 10. It's a solid album, but again, you know, I've got to look at this subjectively and objectively. Why I find this a really quite a fun album to listen to, from an objective standpoint, it does have its flaws, and it's quite a simplistic album, but yeah, obviously I have to add the subjective bit in, and I still think there's fun to be had if you just accept it for what it is. So I think a 7.5 out of 10 is a pretty fair rating for it. This has been The Album Man, thanks for watching, can't wait to subscribe, and as usual, long live rock and roll.